Welcome back to Tanya on One Foot. Today, we're going to run through the fourth section of the book of Tanya, which goes from chapter 35 through chapter 40. In the first section of the book, chapters 1 through 18, we first defined the various different terms. What is a mitzvah? What is a sin? What is a soul? What are the elements of the soul? The two souls we have and the struggle between them. And then we concluded that section with the expectation and the demand that each person strive as best they can to be a Benini. The Benini is defined by two things primarily. Number one is his self-control. We learned how every human being has the capacity to choose what they think, what they speak, and what they do. And therefore, the Benini is to try to exercise as much self-control as possible, though that is thought, speech, and action be in accord with divine desire as expressed in Torah and the Code of Jewish Law. The second element of the Benini is his emotional attachment to God, his love and fear of God. This love and fear is crucial if he's going to stay motivated in this intense and immense struggle of self-control in his thought, speech, and action. Now, attaining love and fear of God, attaining emotional attachment to God, is done through primarily two methods. The first, discussed in chapters 16 and 17, is by using the capacity of the mind, the intellect, by studying about God, understanding God's greatness, understanding God's closeness, understanding God's love for us, then one gives birth to attachment and emotion towards God, love and fear. That's through chapter 16 and 17, and there we also discussed how even if a person cannot uh, create this emotion that they actually feel in their heart, even if one comes to the conclusion, God is so great that I ought to love God, that too is enough to motivate thought, speech, and action in accord with God's desire. In the second section of Tanya, chapter 18 to 25, there the author but discussed the second method of developing emotional attachment for God. And that is by stoking the flame of the hidden love for God. Every Jew has an existential attachment to God. And that existential attachment to God will motivate a person to give up his life rather than, God forbid, bow down to an idol. And there the author explained to us that we should understand that every sin is in some ways a detachment from God. And therefore, remembering that in me there is an existential attachment to God, and this act, sin, is a detachment from God, I would never do that sin. Likewise, every mitzvah is a attachment to God, and therefore, my existential attachment to God should motivate me to engage in as many of these opportunities I have to attach to God through fulfillment of mitzvahs. That was 18 to 25 learning how to stoke the flame of our existential attachment to God and using that method of motivating us in our uh, struggle to control our thought, speech, and action so that it be in accord with God's desire. In the third section of Tanya, from chapter 26 through chapter 34, we discuss the imperative of joy and the absolute necessity to avoid any uh, depression, sadness, and as well as getting rid of complacency. In order to stay in the fight and the struggle to control thought, speech, and action, in order to have any emotional attachment to God, uh, loving God, fearing God, I must stay motivated. I must stay alive, energetic, joyous, happy in my struggle. If I feel down, if I still feel sluggish, if I feel complacent, I'm not going to be able to put up this fight to be able to control myself and serve God the way I should be with love and fear of God. And there we discussed uh, in these chapters, 26 through 34, different methods of dealing with different types of things that might cause me sadness, uh, dealing with complacency, as well as methods of engendering joy in my service of God. Now in this section that we're concluding today, chapters 35 through 40, we discuss purpose. What is the purpose of life? What is the purpose of the struggle? What is the purpose of creation? Now it's important we understand what 
the purpose of everything is because uh, it adds to our motivation and excitement to put up this uh, fight for self-control, this fight to push myself to do what God wants and to live the way God wants in thought, speech, and action. Because for the Bainani, who never really gets rid of his negative desires or even his human desires, natural desires, this struggle can feel like it never ends and it might actually never end. And if I don't see the big picture, if I don't see the purpose toward which I'm putting up this fight, it's very easy to give up and say, it's too much already. I can't fight my urges every day. Where am I going with this? And therefore, it's very important that we understand the purpose toward which we are struggling, toward which we are fighting. And what are we achieving with all of this? Because understanding that will help us stay motivated in this struggle, in this fight, and in our growth. Now, this section can be divided into four parts. The first is understanding my personal goal, the, my personal purpose in life. Number two is the global purpose. What does God want with creation as a whole? Number three, to understand how me achieving my personal goal contributes to the collective ultimate goal for all of creation. And number four, to understand how both my action of mitzvah as well as my emotional attachment of loving God both contribute to this ultimate goal. So let's go through them. In chapter 35, the author addressed the first issue. What's the personal goal of the Bainani? What's the personal goal of a Jew? Well, the ultimate is attachment, oneness, and union with God. That is achieved not through spiritual attachment, not through emotional attachment, but through the act of mitzvahs. As great as my love of God is, there's still a I that loves. And therefore, there's some sort of separation between me and God. There's I who love God. But when I do a mitzvah, this is a godly act. And therefore, in that act, I become absolutely one with God. And this is something that Benedict can do anytime. Even if he doesn't have the full, purest love of God like a tzaddik, nonetheless, he can become one with God in the absolute best possible way by doing these act of mitzvahs. And guess what? It's the body and animal soul doing these mitzvahs. So my personal goal is achieved not by changing my emotions, but by acting the way God wants through the body and the animal soul. In chapter 36, we addressed the second point, which is what is God's global purpose for creation? And there the author explained that the loftiest of spiritual worlds are of absolutely insignificance to God. They are of no consequence. God is way beyond, infinitely beyond, any world, even the loftiest of spiritual ones. The ultimate purpose is that a lowly world like ours, in which godliness is not obvious, that there we should reveal godliness. Reveal godliness in this lowly world. Which leads to the third point, chapter 37. How it is that my personal goal, by me doing mitzvahs, by me becoming one with God through the act of a mitzvah in my body and animal soul, I fulfill the purpose for all of creation because all of creation was all about revealing God in the physical world and that's exactly what I'm doing in a mitzvah. I reveal God in the physical world. The realization of this purpose happens with Mashiach's coming. Mashiach's coming is the revelation of godliness in this physical world brought about by all of the work and all of the mitzvahs we have done throughout this lengthy exile. And finally, we get to the fourth point. This goes from chapter 38, 39, and 40. We here we explain that both the act of the mitzvah and my emotional attachment, my love and fear of God, are crucial for this purpose. Well, the act of the mitzvah is clear. We just finished explaining that the ultimate purpose is to reveal godliness in the physical world, and that's done through the act of mitzvahs. But even my love and fear of God contributes to this ultimate purpose. Besides for the fact that my love and fear of God motivate me in my actions of mitzvahs, but moreover, the love and fear of God elevate the mitzvah and me and that revelation to a whole new world. You see, godliness itself could be condensed. God himself condenses himself to create physical wor a physical world. So if we do a mitzvah that is merely a physical act, then it's true I've revealed godliness, but the godliness I've revealed is still condensed to the realities of our world. 
and therefore of a somewhat lowly nature and a lowly revelation. If I wanted to elevate that revelation, that this revelation should be beyond just godliness as it's condensed in that physicality, but it should have some more spiritual life, then I've got to invest into that act more spiritual life. If I put my attachment, love of God, fear of God, into that act, and I give it some spirituality, I've elevated that mitzvah that it doesn't just reveal godliness on a very limited physical scope, but I've revealed godliness now with some elevated spiritual element, which essentially and ultimately elevates me, my mind, my thoughts to another world as well. That my world, the world I live up in my mind, is not limited to the physicality, but also lives on a more spiritual plane because I'm considering my love and a fear of God, which are more of a spiritual nature. Now, in the next section of Tanya, which goes from chapter 41 through chapter 50, here the Alter Rebbe uh, tells us as follows. H- having understood the different types of love of God and fear of God, the love and fear of God born out of an intellectual understanding of God described in chapter 17, And then the other love of God, the existential attachment to God, described in chapter 18 through 25. Now the Alter Rebbe has to take us from bottom to top, from the lowest level to the highest level. How do we use these methods of loving God? And what are the various things we can meditate on to actually start to bring about these feelings of love and fear of God? What's the entry level? How do I build from that to get higher levels of love, higher levels of fear, Knowing now that there are two types, love and fear of God on the natural existential sense and love and fear of God born of intellect. And now that I learned the purpose of this love and fear of God to give more spiritual life to my mitzvahs, now let's begin the journey from the bottom. How do I start to feel love of God? What do I meditate on? How do I start to feel fear of God? Where should I start? Where do I go to the next step? And so on and so forth. That's coming forward in chapters 41 through chapter 50. And looking forward to seeing you as we continue on this journey in the book of Tanya.